For every action, there's an equal and an opposite reaction. That's Newton's law. Take safety, for example. You have a patient in cardiac arrest and you're traveling in on blues. The action, us performing CPR and giving the appropriate treatment. The equal, the patient is in receipt of the treatment in the hope of saving their life. The opposite, we are traveling at high speed on blues. We're putting ourselves at risk, the patient and other road users. There is a risk and we have assessed it. Risk factors we fight to control and minimize or eliminate in everything we do in life, in our job and out. So what are the foundations of a paramedic? The foundations that support us as paramedics helping us to keep safe, the patient, the colleagues, the organizations we work for and the public's perception of us, we have a duty of care. This means everyone. Benefence, a word that describes to do only good and non-benefence, meaning do no harm. These words describe our duty of care. We are governed by the Healthcare Professional Council in our roles as paramedics and our title is protected as we have been deemed to have a good understanding of the foundations of paramedics along with the appropriate training. We are also audited by the government with such organisations as the Care Quality Commission so it is paramount that we continue to keep the standards high by putting into practice the legal and ethical obligations we have. So what are some of our legal and ethical responsibilities? Confidentiality. Any information that we receive should only ever be passed on to the appropriate parties and a breach of this is in direct conflict of the Data Protection Act 1998 and goes against the rights of our patients. Likewise, the Human Rights Act of 1998 should be followed when applying treatment such as keeping the patient's dignity and obtaining informed consent. Informed consent is applied when a person can be said to have given a consent based on a clear appreciation and understanding of the factors. English law necessitates that before any medical professional can examine or treat a patient, they must obtain informed consent to do so. There are a number of aspects that allow us to presume consent, such as if the patient was unconscious. We also have to determine the patient's mental health, which could be affected due to their current medical condition or ongoing medical problems. Whatever the reasons for us being there, we must consider all factors and document them. A good acronym that I use is the seven P's. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. So what do I mean by this? Well, by making sure we are ready and prepared, we can reduce the risk and deliver a professional service. We make sure that we're ready for our shift mentally and physically. We also carry out checks on our vehicles and equipment, making sure they are full work in order, clean, sterilized, in date, and there is no damage to the packaging. We also check to make sure we have all the equipment on our vehicle that has been supplied to us in order to do our jobs to the best of our abilities. The seven P's can be used in a number of aspects relating to our job, such as cannulating a patient for example. We prepare all equipment, implement infection control procedures and use appropriate personal protective equipment. We also dispose of equipment after use to prevent cross-contamination. I've covered a lot about safety, but I'd like to focus a little on things that may affect us or the patient in the long term. We always approach a scene with caution and focus on danger. To use this as an example, one risk that may be presented is needles. Without this caution, we could risk being a victim of a needle stick injury. This is exactly why we approach a scene with caution and use the appropriate PPE. We must also think about manual handling as this could affect us long term. Everyone has a duty to apply health and safety in the workplace, and as our workplace can be anywhere, we must constantly try to implement these guidelines. Manual handling is one of the aspects of health and safety, and the consequences of not following manual handling techniques could result in injury to the patient or ourselves. This could also result in a criminal or civil lawsuit. It would also be in breach of your own organization's regulations. Another reason that could be considered as a long-term safety risk is that of reporting any safeguarding issues. Whether this is a vulnerable adult, mental health issue, a falls team or social services, we have a duty of care that goes beyond the present moment. The government have many policies in place to protect the individuals we see. To name just two of them, protecting vulnerable adults and safeguarding children. So it's in our interest to stay up to date with the current policies and implement them where necessary. As well as needing to keep up to date with current policies, we must also keep up to date with our training. Continued professional development, or CPD, is a key part to any medical professional's career and allows us to deliver better care to our patients. There are many places you can enrol on a CPD course. 
such as the College of Paramedics and by reading the current JR count, your organisation may also facilitate your CPD training and of course, you can take an active interest in developing your own skills with the use of such materials like the Journal of Paramedics and educational providers such as Birmingham City University. So I refer back to my opening line, for every action there is an equal and an opposite reaction. Make sure your actions are justified based on the foundations of paramedic.